ready for one? Anybody back there? No. All right, Wayne's coming. By one, her accusers were gone. Soon she was standing with Jesus alone. He said, Go thy way and sin no more, lest something worse come into your door. This woman, one time, she fell by the way. They brought her to Jesus. To stone her that day, he wrote on the ground, when her sins were made known, let the one without sin cast the first stone. You may be the one that's fallen today, but there's mercy for you if you take time to pray. Call on Jesus now, believe in your heart, and turn from your sins and make a new start. This woman one time, she fell by the way. They brought her to Jesus to stone her that day. He wrote on the ground when her sins were made known. Let the one without sin cast the first stone. Amen. 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 That brought back a good memory, especially that it's Valentine's Day. That's probably uh, the Isaacs. Uh, Joe Isaacs wrote that song, and uh, they were singing down in Hominy Valley where my brother had, he hadn't been with the, the primitive very long. He used to sing with Joe. And uh, they were singing that song about that time that I met Diana down in Hominy Valley. So I, I, I reminded me of that. Uh, but uh, I'm working on it. I, that one I saw, sent you, yeah, I, I know it, but not everybody else does. But uh, that is a pretty song. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get that one worked out. But uh, Through it all, that's a good song. Russ, you got one? All right. I'll try. You need the tenor singer? I get moving around too much. It's hard, <laughs> hard to keep up with and Matt to leave holding it in. talking this morning about the memories you had of the church and the yeah. loved ones that we've seen go on. I've seen a lot more of them go than you have. Uh, Luke said I was older than dirt and I'm sometimes <laughs> inclined to believe it, but I have. We've seen, we've had a lot of, a lot of people pure the church since Dick 68. They've been a lot come and gone, but uh, uh, I'm hoping that most of them will be waiting on me when I get to the other side. Mm -hmm. <coughs> proper song, I think, bring back some memories. Let's try uh, an oldie goldie. I'm pulling one on you. Uh, I've got more to go to heaven for. You remember that one? 
We'll get you. Try it. Try G. I've been on my way to heaven for a long, long time, and many things has happened that's clouded up my mind. But I am more determined to walk the narrow way. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. There's a golden street to walk upon, a bell I'm gonna ring. A brand new angel in the choir, I wanna hear her sing. There'll be a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through the gate. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. I've been through lonesome valleys, I've climbed the highest hill, I've known the joy of living in the center of God's will. I've watched the angels come and take my loved ones home to stay. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. There's a golden street to walk upon, a bell I'm gonna ring. A brand new angel in the choir, I want to hear her sing. There'll be a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through the gate. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. There's a golden street to walk upon, a bell I'm going to ring. A brand new angel in the choir, I want to hear her sing. There'll be a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through the gate. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. Yes, I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. That's one of them ukulele songs. Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forgot about him playing. Let's do that. Uh, that Amen. soldier was me. Amen. Lord, it, you know that song we just did. Uh, you know it's it's been sung by many groups and yeah. everybody sings a little bit different. Yeah. And that was the first yeah. time I ever sang it like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's an inspiration song. Yeah. <laughs> You never know how I'm going to sing it, Chuck. <laughs> I know God holds the thread of life, for I can feel the tug. I know God holds the thread of life, for I can feel the tug. Got him one you're talking about? There is a place. Yeah. They've already done. Is that about right? That sounds about right. Okay. Sounds good to me. <laughs> is it is it C one? Am I am I above a bus C? No, that's B. Huh? B. That's what I thought C. No, it's good C. C C. Just open C. We'll try to. There, that is pretty low. Can you get it just a little bit higher? We sure can. We can go one more. Or you want to just do it in deep? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. We do it wherever. Try to. There is a place somewhere below I've heard and read about. And they say that people, when they go, can never come back out. A place of torment for lost souls who've turned the Lord away. They say that.
the fire it burns all night because there is no day. But I escaped that awful place when Jesus saved my soul. And not one hair upon my hand will into that place go. No, I don't have to worry since the Savior took my part. The only fire I'll ever feel is burning in my heart. Hey. Good Amen. Eternal life was given me when I was born again. And the Lord applied His precious blood and cleansed me from all sin. He left a spark that satisfies my hungry soul's desire. And that tiny flame that's burning now will keep me from the fire. Yes, I'd escape that awful place when Jesus saved my soul. And not one hair upon my head will into that place go. No, I don't have to worry since the Savior took my part. The only fire I'll ever feel is burning in my heart. Amen. 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 Aren't you glad you don't have to go to that place? Amen. Good to see y'all out here this evening, amen. amen. Glad you're here tonight. Amen. <laughs> Could be somewhere else. You, 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 so, you chose to be here, amen. Thank God for that. It's good to be in church, amen. I'm telling you, we're living in a day where it's people just don't care. They don't care about church. They just, uh, and we know we're reading the Bible. You know, the last days and things going on. But we don't have to be that way, right? Amen. I, I thank God that, uh, I thank God I got parents that took me to church. Amen. That mom said a post on Facebook. I can't remember all it said. But uh, you talk about precious memories. Amen. And I thank God I got parents that not only told me how, how to be saved and preached the gospel to me, and told me we need to go to church, but took me to church. Amen? And not only took me to church, but was an example to me to show me that not just because they say it, but they also live it. Amen? And they, and they love to go to church, and, and every time the doors opened, we were there. Amen? No matter what, we were there. And I thank God. Amen. Growing up, you know how it is. You get a teenager, and you get that point, and you're like, ah, you know, and all that stuff. And then go away to college, and you really get a I got away from it. You know, and then uh, thank God, though. Amen. But that precious memories, I, and you read singing that song. Well, I think about down there at the old uh, First Baptist Church in Brookville. I think about my grandma living right next door to that church. I remember going to church on Sundays. I remember getting out, maybe seeing my cousins coming down from Indianapolis. And I remember uh, Sunday school teachers. My mom was one of them growing up. I, I remember the, the preachers that would come in and preach the gospel. And I remember, I remember that place being packed, man, on, on Sunday mornings. Sunday nights, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sunday nights, you know. Wednesday nights, you know. I remember, I remember people just loving to come to church. And I remember that, uh, you know, Sunday school would be packed. I mean, it'd be kids in the, in the, in the, in the rooms, and we'd be packed in there. And then vacation Bible school, I remember that. And I just remember, man, just God just, you know, going through there. And like I said, I wasn't saved, you know, but I got saved. And, uh, and I think about those memories, you know, my grandma and, and them going to church and, and just getting together with family and getting a guitar out and them singing. And my goodness, man, I'm telling you, I, I thank God. But wait till we get to heaven, amen, amen. Thank God we can look back right now and, and think about all the people, like you said, that was 
influence in your life, amen, and uh, that were uh, that love the Lord and not the world. So I thank God for that. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you, God. Lord, you're so good to us. Lord, here we are again on a Sunday night, <laughs> February the 14th of 2021. Lord, we thank you, God, Lord, that you've allowed us again to come together. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your precious blood. We thank you, Lord, at what you did on the cross. We thank you, Lord, that you rose again the third day. Thank you, Lord, that you made a way, Lord, that the Bible says we must, you must be born again. Lord, I thank you for uh, this church here, Lord, and the history, and Brother Russell talking about uh, this today, Lord, about the memories tonight, and uh, the people he's seen pass on, and, you know, uh, Brother Russell's been here a long time. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this uh, church that's been, uh, uh, this local assembly, Lord, has been called out uh, over 50 years ago, Lord, and, and uh, preachers, Lord, that you sent here to, uh, to start this church and, and, the, and the original uh, founding uh, members, Lord. And God, we know a lot of them went on home, Lord. But we sure do thank you, Lord. They obeyed you, God. And Lord, they, they come out here to, to build this church, Lord. We know the people's the church, but this building, Lord, that they can gather in, Lord. Pray, God, that these last days, Lord, as we're heading, Lord, in these, uh, we know we're in the last days, we're heading, we're getting ready to see you come back to get, get your church. Lord, I pray, God, this local called out assembly here at Freedom Missionary Baptist Church will stand strong the way it started. Lord, I pray, God, will stand strong on, on your word, stay strong on your promises, Lord, that we won't waver, God, as we head in that, long, that last stretch, the, the last lap, what do you want to call it, Lord, uh, Lord, for you come and get your church out, Lord, the universal church, Lord. I pray, God, that we could stand here to be a beacon, Lord, to be a light, Lord, to, to show people and preach the gospel, Lord, and tell them about the good news of the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Lord, I think about all the members, Lord, that people that's, that's been here before, God, has gone on home, Lord, and uh, Lord, we'll see them one day, and we'll have a big reunion up there, Lord, and praising you, God. And we just pray, God, tonight, as the word being preached, Lord, I pray, God, for somebody not saved, they get saved, Lord. and. We know, God, that uh, as is the message and the songs that are being sung and the message being preached, Lord, is not just here, but it's going out across the uh, Internet. Lord, we pray, God, that maybe it might be a year, it might be the night, but somebody tune in, Lord, and maybe a song, maybe the word, God, something would touch them, Lord, and they'd see, Lord, that they're not saved. And they need to be born again. Maybe there's somebody out there that's backslidden, Lord, that, God, they just uh, they don't feel the need to go to church. Maybe they've been hurt in church, or I don't know, Lord, something. God, the devil's lied to them, Lord. He's a liar. He's the father of it. Lord, I pray, God, that they hear, hear something, Lord, uh, from Freedom Missionary Baptist Church to encourage them, Lord, to get them back in the fight, not to stay down, not to stay out, Lord, but to rise back up, Lord, to get back in that fight, Lord, and fight the good fight of faith. Lord, I sure do love you. Help us, God, as we preach, Lord. I pray you preach. Pray you forgive me all my sins. Lord Jesus Christ, name I pray. Amen. I got a Bible tonight. If you all go to uh, Mark chapter 2, find out if you could stand. Mark chapter 2, start there at verse 1. Mark chapter 2 and verse 1. Mark chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, and again he entered into... Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. <laughs> I can't, amen. Noise, it means spread by report, much talked of, amen. Chapter, verse 2, and straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God only? Yeah, that's God right there. And immediately when Jesus perceived in the spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk? 
but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified, say, glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. You can be seated. I want to preach tonight a simple message, amen, in the house, amen, I want to preach on in the house. You look around today in, in your own house, what do you see? Do you see things that will magnify God, amen? I'm talking about the things in your own house, uh, your own physical address, where you live. Inside of your house, what can you go in and see things that would magnify the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you have scriptures on your wall? Do you have uh, the Bible, amen, that's readily available to read? Not just for decoration, amen, but a Bible that's in the house that is always being opened and read and searched, amen, and rightly divided, amen. Today, men, if you have children at home, do you open the Bible and preach the word to your family, amen? You mean, do you read it, amen? Do you study it? Do you go over it and raise your kids upright? In the Lord Jesus Christ and his words, amen. What do you see in your own houses today? If you look at somebody's house today, do you see surrendered husbands or do you see husbands that are unsurrendered? Do you see a wife that's a helpmate or a contentious wife? The Bible says in Proverbs 21 and 9, it is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house, amen. Proverbs 21 and 19 says it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. Amen. Amen. Russell's been married a long time. <laughs> Amen. You know what I bring out up today? Uh, on Wednesday nights, we're getting ready to go into one of the mysteries of the body. And that compares with the Lord Jesus Christ, how he set up the church and the husband and the wife relationship. Amen. Here we see in this house, you know, do we see children that are obeying or disobeying their parents? In Ephesians 6, 1 and 2 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Uh, it says, uh, For this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. I look around the church, amen, our church house that we come to. And you look around, you see what's in the house. Well, we see pews. Thank God for them, amen. Boy, you got some padded pews. We got, uh, we got a pulpit. We got carpet. We got air conditioning. Well, right now you got all kinds of air conditioning, right? You got heat in the in the in the winter time, in the summer, in the in the winter time, and you got air conditioning in the summertime, right? And you see, we got doors, and we got all kinds of of, of amenities here that can comfort us, amen. But I want to know in the house that we come to here, as people that are, we are the temple of the living God, amen. As we come and meet together, is the Lord Jesus Christ among us? Amen. It's a spirit among us. Amen. When we, when we come in here to sing and praise God and we come in here to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, do we know that the presence of God is among us? Back in the old time when you see those revivals, you see the preachers get up and preach a message. Amen. People getting right with God. The spirit of God would move among the congregation. Amen. You get somebody testifying, somebody praising God. Amen. Somebody else asking, telling the Lord how great God is. Amen. And just saying, hey, thank God that I'm here tonight. I want to preach on that in the house. Here we see when the Lord Jesus Christ comes in here in Mark 2, verse 1 through 12. You see in verse 1, he said, The guinea entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. In the house we see here in our text in Mark chapter 2, first of all, we see there's preaching in this house. In verse number 2, it says, And straightway many were gathered together so much that they were, there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. You know, Jesus preached, amen. He preached the word, amen. He didn't get up there and tap dance. He didn't get up there and put a drama show on. He didn't get up there and get a bunch of flags together, amen. He didn't get up there and get a puppet show together. He preached the word of God. That's what we need to have in the house today, in the church house, and also in your house, in your physical house, where your address, where you abide, and also inside the temple where you are, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You got to get that point where you get the preaching of the word down. He come in there and he preached and said he preached 
the word. He didn't share anything. Amen. He preached the word. And when Jesus Christ preaches, he preaches. Over in Matthew 23, 13 through 17, this is what he says. He said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for he shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. He says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor, ye fools and blind. For, for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. In Matthew 23 and 33, he says, These serpents, ye generate, generation of vipers, how can he escape the damnation of hell? Jesus is preaching to religious hypocrites. Amen. When you get that word of God, see the Lord Jesus Christ preaching, he don't candy coat it. Amen. He don't, he don't care if it offends you. He don't care if you get upset. He preaches the word. Here we see in Matthew or Mark twelve or Mark chapter two, and they come over there, and it says he was noised that he was in the house, and when he preached the word, and he said it was so packed in there that they couldn't get in for the press. You know, when you preach the word of God, it ought to bring the people about it to hear the the un, uh, uh, uncompromised word of God. Amen. In the last days that we're living in, people are not searching for the truth anymore. They're, they're searching for somebody to go and, and compromise what the Word says. Amen. If there's a preacher that will compromise the Word of God, he is not fit to preach. He is not fit to pastor. He is not fit to get behind a pulpit to compromise one word of the living God. Amen. Oh, the Lord Jesus Christ comes over there and he, he preaches about hell in Mark 9. Over there he talks in Mark 9, 42-48, talks about where the fire is not quenched and where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. He talks about hell, fire. He preaches on the damnation of hell. He preaches on about this place called hell. I think about when Jesus found, remember over there in the temple, those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changer of the money sitting. He made a scourge of small cords, the Bible says, and drove them all out of the temple and overthrew the tables. But you say, well, Jesus shouldn't be doing that. You tell him that, amen. Amen, he's God, amen. He can do whatever he wants. Everybody's got this picture of the Lord Jesus Christ that he's some effeminate, uh, uh, limp-wristed person. Let me tell you, my God is powerful, amen. amen. I serve a God that can do anything he wants at any time that he wants. You know, if you read that Bible, he steps in and out of dispensation. You know why? Because he's God. He can do whatever he wants. And let me tell you today, when you get a hold of this preaching, you get a hold that it was noise, that he was in the house, let me tell you, when you get a hold underneath this preaching of the power of God, it will convict you. And if you're wrong, you will repent and get right with God. Don't you want to live a life pleasing to God? But he was over there and he said that he overthrew the tables. Amen. It said, Jesus said, it is written, my house is the house of prayer, but he had made it a den of thieves. When Jesus preaches the word, which he is the word, the house gets clean. Amen? The house is cleansed when he preaches the word. You all clean your house at home? I hope you do. Amen? Don't, don't let that thing stink. Amen? But if you don't clean your house, what happens? Dirt piles up, right? If you don't clean your toilet, oh, man, that gets a nasty mess. Don't clean your shower, scum builds up. Amen? I went to, when I went to college, I didn't like to clean. Oh, shower was nasty. That thing would get so nasty in there because us boys didn't like to clean it, man. And if you don't clean or dust your house, you get a dust piles up and it gets nasty in there. Have you ever been to a house that's been so nasty that you walk in and it stinks and it makes you sick? I have. You know where I used to work? Come on, I ain't been to somebody's house here that stinks like that, amen. But where I used to work, and I used to you do, I'd go in houses, and I'd go to some houses, I've been in some houses, you walk in, and that's the smell, the stench of the house would make you want to puke. 
You know what you do with that word of God when, the, when Jesus preaches that word of God over here and people are, he's noised about in the house when the word of God's being preached and you've got sickness in your, in your house, you've got sin in your house, you need to get it out and confess it before God. Amen. That stuff makes the Lord sick. Amen. He don't want you lukewarm, either hot or cold. Amen. And we need to get to the point where we will go anywhere and do anything for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Not this world, but what God wants us to do. You got to get to that point where when Jesus, when he preached in here, it, that cleanse the house. In Matthew 5 and 22, it says, By saying to you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, now listen to that. They take that out of modern Bibles. Shall be in danger of the judgment. Whosoever shall say to thy brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But, but whosoever will say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Let me give you a little something right there. We just read up there where God, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he preached, he called them fools. We just read it. In Matthew 5, 22 it says, and he, said that, he said whosoever shall say thy fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Was Jesus in danger of hellfire? Absolutely not. Give you a little bit tonight. Study that thing out. People don't write to divide the word of truth. You'll get to the point where you'll get so hicked up on that thing, and when the Lord preaches that word, his word, it is truth and nothing but truth. But there's a thing over there the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God a work that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? You know what happens? You get so... Uh, to the point where when you read that Bible, you apply everything to yourself. And you can't. you got to rightly divide it. Here you see in the house, you see the preaching was done in the house. Also, you see the persistence in verse 4. And it says in, in Mark chapter 2, verse 4, And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Let me take a time out there and say, I sure would like to have some friends like that. Amen. Would you like to have some friends like that? They see you in need. They see you in a, in a port where you need something in your life. And they know, I have here we see in Mark 2, that they're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ. They know that the Lord Jesus Christ can heal. They've seen that they've heard the miracle. It's been noised abroad. Amen. They know he's in the house. And they know their friends are sick of the palsy. They say, if we can get him to the Lord Jesus Christ, he could be made whole. Amen. You know what we ought to do if we can get somebody, amen, to the local church house to get in to hear the word of God. You know what we used to do back in the time? You talk about precious memories. We used to get people to come to church. They said, well, I can't. I don't know how to tell. Invite them to church, amen. And you know what? When we'd invite somebody to church and, and you get them down underneath the preaching of the word of God, you knew that when you brought them to church, you know they would hear the gospel, the grace of God, amen. And you know they'd be exposed to the truth. These boys over here said, this boy we got over here, he's sick of the palsy. He said, we need to get him over there. And the persistence over there, when they came over there and they saw that the press, and they saw that it was uh, they couldn't get in there, and they saw that it was a pack to the house, amen. You know what they could have done? They said, well, they could have said, you know what? It's so packed, we can't get in. Uh, you know what? It, there's no, so many people in there, we just got to give up. We just got to go back to the house and, and just give it up. But you know what they said? Uh, there was persistence in those boys. Persistent means firm continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. Let me ask you today, church, where is our persistence today living for the Lord Jesus Christ? Individual and as a church, are we going to be the point where we're going to be like these boys? We got somebody sick. We know there's a healer. We know that we can come in there and get healed. And there's the persistence of these boys. Amen. They didn't give up. They didn't back down. They didn't, when it got difficult, the opposition that would come and the bringing them to the sick, to the house where the Lord is, they said, We are not going to give up. We got to get to that point, church, that we're going to get in there and the persistence in 2021 and 2022, whenever the Lord comes back, before He comes back, persistent in living for God. Amen. Amen. We got to get perform a, a firm continuance in a course of action, in spite of difficulty or opposition. To get in and stay close to the Lord Jesus Christ can be a difficult situation. And Romans 7 and 21 says, I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Amen. 
It says, hey, the, the closer you get with the Lord Jesus Christ, the closer relationship you live for the Lord Jesus Christ, the more you surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, the more you preach the gospel to the Lord Jesus Christ, the more you witness about the Lord Jesus Christ, there's going to be a point where you're going to have persistence in your life to overcome the difficulty and opposition and serving the living Lord Jesus Christ. you got to keep serving. Amen. You gotta keep smiling. Amen. You gotta keep shouting. Amen. No matter the difficulties that come in your life. I gave this illustration before. I'm gonna give it again. Remember back, it might be a couple years ago, the president, President Trump, President of the United States, Trump. Amen. He was over there and they they got in there and they started dogging him. They started uh, doing an investigation on him. And if y'all have been investigated, it will wear on you. Amen. Let me tell you, I've done investigations on people and, and it wears them down when it draws out long investigations. Here's our president of the United States of America. And I'm not saying he's, he's going to save anybody. I'm just saying, I just started thinking about the president. I remember on one time I looked over there and all the things that were coming against him, stacked against him, the people that, are, that hate him, amen, the things that he's going through. And I thought to myself, man, the, the things that the opposition and he's trying to make America great, amen, he's trying to get back to America. He's trying to bring God. I mean, the, the man's trying, amen. He's trying to bring him. He's got some crazy woman preacher up there that, that needs to be kicked out, but he's trying. He's trying to listen and trying to do the things that, 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 that the people are trying to, to get him in that situation. We're praying for our president, but they keep investigating him. And all of a sudden, he comes across and he's driving down there and he's back of, a, of an SUV. And all that investigation, all that pressure that's on him as being the President of the United States and the constant investigation, amen, and the constant lies told about him. He looks over and he looks out to the crowd in the, in the camera and he just puts a big smile on his face and he just starts waving. I thought to myself, you know what? We need to be Christians when the devil comes against us, amen. When people and your friends come against you, when all things break loose against you, you get to that point, the persistence in your life, amen, that you're going to keep on going, you're going to keep on shouting, you're going to keep on smiling, you're going to keep on serving, you're going to keep on studying, you're going to keep on praising the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I tell you, we got to get to that point, that persistence, amen. If your hunter's in here, Boy, they're persistent. They'll get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Amen. They'll get up at the at 4 and even gets daylight. And they'll go out there and sit in a tree stand. And they'll wait for the big doe or the big buck to come on. Some of them shoot doe. But they wait for that big buck to come on. Now, I never, I'm not a big hunter, but I got a lot of friends that hunt. And they tell me these stories about sitting out there. They're persistent. I said, there ain't no way I'd sit out there in 10-degree weather at two, 4 o'clock in the morning waiting for some stupid deer. That's just me, amen. But these boys are persistent in their hunt. And they said they'd been up there telling me, Brian, we'd be sitting up at that, that tree. And he said, man, we'd be up there early in the morning. And they said there'd be a buck that come by. But he said, you know what? I'm waiting on the big one. They said, we've got, we got trail cameras out there, and we've seen the big buck. And they said, we're waiting. We're passing up all the other ones, but we're waiting on the big buck. And they said, they were out there persistent weekend after weekend, day after day in the hunting season to get the big buck. You know what we got to do, Christians? As Christians, we got to be persistent in praising the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We got to be persistent in going and doing the things of what God wants us to do. Here we see in the house, we see the preaching, we see the persistence, we see the perception. That's in verse number 5. It says, when Jesus saw their faith, listen to that church, he said unto the sick of the palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. You know what he did on the Lord Jesus Christ? It was noised about. He was over there in the house. The press was in there. They come in there and they, they got up there and they had broken up the, 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 the ceiling and they brought in, let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. You know what perception is? Is the act of perceiving or of receiving impressions by the senses or the act or that act or process of the mind which makes known an eternal object. 
Now you all see here in the house, you bet the Lord Jesus Christ preaching. The Lord Jesus Christ over there seeing these men coming and the press in there and seeing these boys coming with the sick of the palsy and seeing that they can't get in. All of a sudden, can you imagine Jesus preaching, man? He's out there preaching the word of God, amen. All of a sudden, the roof breaks loose. Well, I'd be awesome here, wouldn't it? Have so many people in here. Brother Rick, you couldn't get in. Somebody up there breaks that roof loose, and you're like, what in the world's going on up there? And they're putting in there, they just want to get in to hear the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they come in there, and they broke that roof open. And then all of a sudden, you imagine everybody looking up there saying, what are these idiots doing? What are, what, what are they doing, man? They're up there breaking the roof. They're going to make us go up there and patch that roof, get a new roof. Boy, we got to get a business meeting. It's going to cost all kinds of money. We're going to have to vote on it. And we, I mean, it's going to be a wreck, man. They bought that front old roof across there, and Jesus looked up there and said, he said, hey, he said they saw, he said when Jesus saw their faith, he said in the sick of the palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Boy, that's awesome, ain't it? The Lord Jesus Christ's perception of those boys, the perception of their faith, amen, the perception that they were willing to break loose the roof to get their friend down in there to see the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus saw their faith, amen, when Jesus saw their faith, in Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In Hebrews 11, 5 through 6 says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. It was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had the testimony that he pleased God. Here it is. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. When he looked up there, I could see the Lord Jesus Christ. He saw the perception, amen, of those boys. He saw the faith that they had, that they were just trying to get him in there to get him healed. And had their friend that had the sick of the palsy got healed because of their faith. Church, what about our faith tonight? Amen. What about our faith in that book? Our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our faith when we pray. Amen. Our faith when we seek the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer and pray for the sick and pray for the ones that are lost and pray for the, the church. Amen. And pray that God would do something great within our midst. Amen. Do we have faith to see it? Amen. Do we have faith to believe that God would do a supernatural work among us? Amen. I'm not talking about signs and wonders. I'm talking about personal work inside, amen. Seeing people saved, seeing people getting baptized up here, hey, thank God for this. It's about time we get this thing filled, filled up, amen, and start seeing people getting baptized and seeing people coming out to be discipled and people getting up to want to teach Sunday school class, people wanting to go out on the street to preach the word, amen, people getting excited about God, amen. Church, I don't want a church that's dead, amen. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't been called to preach to a church that's dead and dying. We're called to preach about the living God to get excited about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We ought to get to the point where, you know what, when God sees our perception of us and perception of our faith, uh, that he says there's something different about those folks down there at Round Barn. There's something different about that Freedom Missionary Baptist Church down there. When they pray, they actually believe that it's going to happen. Amen. They actually have faith, amen, to believe what they're praying for. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, it says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Those boys had faith that Jesus, they got him to the Lord Jesus Christ, and they got him over there that, that God, that the Jesus could, sit, could heal him of the palsy and his sins be forgiven. Today, your faith in Christ can get your sins redeemed. Amen. Today your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ can get you born again. In Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. There's that word. And that not, by, not out of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. My question today, church, what is the Lord's perception of your faith today? Over there in Matthew 17, I like over here, there's the Lord come over there. And this guy come over to the Lord Jesus Christ. And said, he said, my son is a lunatic and sore vexed. He said he followed into the fire and water. He brought him to his disciples, and they could not cure him. Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation. Jesus rebuked the devil, and it departed out of him. The disciples asked Jesus, Why could we not cast him out? 
Now you got to remember the Lord Jesus Christ gave those apostles the power, amen, to go out and preach and cast out devils and heal the sick, amen, and speak in tongues because they threw it to the Jews to require a sign. But I'm over here, I'm telling you, they went over there and he said, why? He said, the disciples said to ask, Jesus, why could we not cast them out? In Matthew 17 and 20, and Jesus said, and then because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be, and it shall remove, and, sh and nothing shall be impossible unto you. You know where my faith lies? In that word. My faith lies in the Lord Jesus Christ. My faith lies in the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. My faith lies in what God has written down. Amen. My faith lies that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to get us home one day into heaven. I thank God for that faith. And I started thinking about Luke 18 and 8. It says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Is he going to find faith on the earth? Church, we got to have that point where we're persistent, amen, that we are going to do whatever the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to do. And when the Lord has that perception of our faith, then maybe we can have a revival within ourselves and within this church. Amen. In the house, amen, we've got the preaching, we've got the persistence, we've got the perception, and, third, and fourthly, we've got the pessimist. That means skeptic, doubter, alarmist. Go to verse 6 through 7. Mark 2, 6 through 7. Now here we go down through there. He preached the word. They couldn't come in because of the press. And then when Je and they brought him in there and Jesus saw their faith. He, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But, here we go in verse 6. There's always a but. Verse 6. But there was a certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. And they said, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? That's a good question. Because that is God. The mystery of godliness. We've taught it on a Wednesday night. There's another one for you to write down. There's another one showing who he is. God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ manifests his deity as a forgiver of men's sins right here in this scripture. Here we got the pessimists, amen. We got these scribes sitting over there. We see Jesus preaching. We see the healing and we see the people, the man's faith. We see the persistence. We see the, 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 the perception, amen, that the Lord Jesus Christ had with these men's faith and he heals them. And all of a sudden, in the middle of this revival, in the middle of this breaking out, what God has done, the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, you got somebody skeptical. Ain't that just where we're at in 2021? Amen. 2020 into 2021, you got those scribes over there, and they say, why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but, but God only? This pessimist, this skeptic, this doubter, this alarmist, he says over there, but the, yeah, I started thinking about this over here, that Jesus was God in the flesh. Amen. And the scribes sitting there in Mark 2 could not pick up on that. But you know who could pick up on that? You know that these scribes and all those Pharisees over there, they, they're always out to get God, trip him up, Jesus on something, always trying to get him to say something, ask him some questions, always trying to trip him up, and the Lord's always coming back at him. I love that, man. You read that over there. But here in Mark 2, they said, they said that only God, only God can do that. They didn't believe that was God manifest in the flesh. But you know who does? The unclean spirits. Go right there to Mark 1. Go to Mark, let's go back to chapter, we're in chapter 2. Go to Mark chapter 1 and verse 21. Check this out. It says, And when they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered to the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. <laughs> scribes, man. Let's listen to this. And here it is, verse 23. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. Listen to what he said, verse 24, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. You know who knew who he was? The unclean spirit. 
He know exactly who that was. They look over there, and he's over there dogging on those scribes over there. That scribe on that, oh, looks over there in verse chapter, in chapter 2 over here. Go down there in verse 6. And, and when the Lord Jesus Christ came in there and healed that man, they said, who in the world is this man speaking blasphemies? Only God can forgive sin. I started thinking to myself today, we limit the Lord Jesus Christ. We limit the Holy Ghost inside of us, amen. We limit the power that God has given us, amen, to preach the gospel, amen, to see people saved and set free and break bondages, amen, and break addiction and live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be a pessimist, amen. Don't be this this scribe over there that says, hey, who is this? And the unclean spirit in chapter 1 knew exactly who he was. Don't be the skeptic, the doubter in the house when Jesus shows up. Amen. Well, on a Sunday morning, maybe I'm praying God will show up. Amen. And come down here and bless us on a Sunday morning, on a Sunday night, on a Wednesday night. Amen. And when it happens and God comes in there and starts blessing. Amen. And it starts getting real. And people start repenting, getting right with God. Don't sit back and be a skeptic of it. Amen. No, that's the power of God moving within a service. Thank God we still have the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What happens today, people walk the, walk the, aisle, uh, the aisle, get saved. You'll be back here, somebody will be in the church saying, did he really get saved? Somebody come up and repent at an altar and ask the Lord to help them to pray for somebody. You know what happens when somebody comes to the altar? Let me tell you, there's power in that altar, amen. You come up here to that altar, somebody sits down there to pray, and they might be praying for a loved one. They might be praying for a lost one. They might be praying for somebody to get saved, but there'll be a skeptic out there in the building, and they'll be looking over there saying, mm-hmm, what are they doing down there at the altar? Why, what, what kind of sin are they committed? Yeah, I saw them Saturday night. They ought to get down the altar. I seen them out there Friday night. It's thank God they're down at the altar. That skeptic is sitting there saying that, and I pray it ain't you. You're the one that needs to get right with God. God. You're the one that needs to get right with the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, and not be a skeptic, a pessimist, amen, but believe the power in the Lord Jesus Christ. When he starts moving, amen, that spirit of God starts moving. You all been in a service like that? I know Brother Matt has. In a spirit, where the spirit starts moving through there, and people start getting excited about God. Some people start crying. Some people just start thanking God for what He done. Amen. And people getting right with God. And somebody might walk the altar and get saved. And let me tell you, every time somebody, it seems like, gets saved, there's always somebody that'll come up to the preacher and try to knock it down. Why is that? They're pessimists. They're like a scribe over here at Mark 2. After they see the power and the glory of God, They say, oh, that really can't be God doing that. That's got to be some type of uh, emotion that's going on. We see the preaching in the house. We see the persistence in the house. We see the the perception of the house. We see the pessimists in the house. And lastly, we see the power in the house. Verse 10 through 12 says, But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power. (laughs) There it is, hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth before them all insomuch that they were all amazed. I like what it says right here. And glorified God. That's what it's all about. The glorified God saying we never saw it on this fashion. You know that power of the Lord Jesus Christ when he said it up there sick of the palsy, amen, this sins be forgiven, he was healed. Arise, take up thy bed and go thy way into thy house. He said immediately he arose, took up thy bed and went forth before them all. And they were all amazed and glorified God. When the power of God, amen, comes into a service, uh, it won't magnify a preacher, it won't magnify a singer, it won't magnify a person, it'll magnify God. And boy, God gets all the glory. He gets all the praise, amen. He gets all the respect, amen. And we sit back and say, thank you, Lord. I didn't want to be a pessimist, uh, but I thank God that I got to see the power of God work in a service, uh, and we give you all the praise and glory. It's the power of God. It's the glorified God. In Matthew 28 and 18, it says, And Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Question I'll leave tonight. Is Jesus in your house? Amen. Is Jesus, amen, is, this, is Jesus in your house, in your physical address house? Also, is he 
in your temple, in the house. Amen. Is he doing everything that you're allowing him to do? Is he your preeminence? Are you giving him first place? Or are you giving him leftovers? Amen. Are you excited about the things that God's doing in your life? Or is it the point where you're just, mm, oh well. What happens today in 2021? More people will lay out of church because they have got away from the power of God. They have laid out a church. Let me tell you, I'll end on this. I went a little long tonight. I thank God that we got a place to come. Amen. I thank God we got members of this church that love the Lord Jesus Christ. I th- and I ain't preaching to you guys here tonight. I thank God every one of you here tonight. Amen. I thank God that you love the Lord, that you want to do what God wants you to do, and you love to come and gather yourselves together. Just like Matt said this morning. That's what he talked about in Hebrews 10.25. Not forsaking, assembly yourselves together. When I'm preaching to somebody out there in TV land, if you can come to church, you ought to be here. Amen. Amen. If a preacher gets up here and encourages you not to come to church, he ain't a preacher. Amen. Amen. You ought to come because, not because a preacher tells you, but because you love that word. You love the Lord Jesus Christ. You love him to be in your house, and you give him preeminence in everything in your life. Amen. Let's all stand and sing. Thank God we got an altar. Amen. Thank God that we could come and pray to him. Thank hey, welcome to the stage. My friend and yours, Raymond of Cortez. Here in the house. Thank you, Thank you. Father, you've done a wonderful job this way. You can't do that. This road of life Oh, right.